everybody. Welcome to another episode of He Said. <laughs> Cruise Today we're going to be. Re oh. Today we're. Oh, you want to try it? Ooh. You okay? Does that hurt? Oh, ouch. Don't slap yourself. Oh. You got to do it gentle. Oh, today we're going to be reading an all-time classic book called Harold and the Purple Crayon by Crockett Johnson. Yeah. All right, let's read it. One evening, after thinking it over for some time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. There wasn't any moon, and Harold needed a moon for a walk in the moonlight and he needed something to walk on. He made a long straight path so he wouldn't get lost, and he set off on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on the long straight path, so he left the path for a shortcut across a field, and the moon went with him. The shortcut led right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be, he didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a small forest with just one tree in it. See, he drew a tree. Boop, 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 boop. Tree, troll. tree troll. It turned out to be an apple tree. Apple tree. Apple tree. The apples would be very tasty, Harold thought, when they got red. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. It was a terribly frightening dragon. See the dragon? Dragon. Roar. It even frightened Harold. He backed away. His hand holding the purple crayon shook. Suddenly, he realized what was happening. But by then, Harold was over his head in an ocean. Oh no! He came up thinking fast. And in no time, he was climbing aboard a trim little boat. He quickly set sail, and the moon sailed along with him. See? After he had sailed long enough, Harold made land without much trouble. He stepped ashore on the beach, wondering where he was. The sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics, and the thought of picnics made him hungry. So he laid out a nice, simple picnic lunch. There was nothing but pie. But there were all nine kinds of pie that Harold liked best. When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. He hated to see so much delicious pie go to waste. So Harold left a very hungry moose and a deserving porcupine to finish it up. Want to see the porcupine? And there's the moose. And off he went, looking for a hill to climb to see where he was. Harold knew that the higher up he went, the farther he could see. So he decided to make the hill into a mountain. If he went high enough, he thought, he could see the window of his bedroom. He was tired and he felt he ought to be getting to bed. You want milk? But as he looked down over the side, he slipped. And there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling in thin air. Oh no. Draw a parachute, Harold. But luckily, he kept his wits and his purple crayon. He made a balloon and he grabbed onto it. Yeah, that was close and he made a basket under the balloon big enough to stand in. He had a fine view from the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. So he made a house with windows, and he landed the balloon on the grass in the front yard. None of the windows was his window. He tried to think where his window ought to be. He made some more windows. He made a big building full of windows. 
He made lots of buildings full of windows. He made a whole city full of windows. <gasps> Harold, calm down. We don't need that many windows. But none of the windows was his window. He couldn't think where it might be. Get it together, Harold. He decided to ask a policeman. The policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway, but Harold thanked him. That is definitely one dopey looking policeman. <laughs> and he walked along with the moon, wishing he was in his room and in bed. Then suddenly, Harold remembered. Bing! He remembered where his bedroom window was when there was a moon. It was always right around the moon. And then Harold made his bed. He got in it and drew up the covers. <laughs> Tuck myself in. <laughs> Smile, sleepy X's for eyes. Z, Z, Z. If we had a budget, I could animate that. The purple crayon dropped on the floor and Harold dropped off to sleep. Sleepy Harold. Well, that was a fun adventure, wasn't it? I really liked uh, Harold's creative solutions throughout the book. I wonder if this book encourages little ones to draw. Hopefully not draw on walls and stuff like that, but yeah, I mean, that would be funny. This book sort of reminds me of Where the Wild Things Are, but a lot less sinister. It's just a nice little dreamy story. It goes at a leisurely pace, but, you know, doesn't feel drawn out. Drawn out. Did you see what I did there? Ah! He drew his way home. <laughs> I know. That was good. Oh, I kill me. My favorite drawing is definitely of the policeman who looks like a boob. And his, like, side, his sideways cap makes him look like the town fool or drunkard. That was crazy when Harold drew all the buildings and windows. He made like a little metropolis there. That must have been very time consuming. Anyway, I can see why it's a classic. I enjoyed that. I think Henry sort of liked it. He stuck around for once, so that's a good sign. Do you remember when Uma Thurman draws the square in Pulp Fiction? She's like, don't be a... That was pretty great. All right, that's been our episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like, love, subscribe, leave a comment. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Ah, mm. boop. Ah, boop. Ah, boop, ah, boop, ah, boop. Ah, boop. Ah, boop. Harold in the green crayon because we didn't have a, a purple crayon. You want a green crayon? We goes. There you go. We go. We go. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, thank you. I'll take that. <laughs>